We have just received two major filings in former, in, involving the former Trump lawyer, Michael Cohen, one from the special counsel, Robert Mueller, another from federal prosecutors in New York. And we're awaiting another Mueller filing pertaining to former Trump campaign chairman, Paul Manafort. Uh, there's lots of news that's breaking right now, significant developments. I quickly want to go uh, to our senior justice correspondent, Evan Perez. Evan, uh, like all of us, you've been going through these filings. Give our viewers the headlines. What are you finding out? Well, Wolf, this is a tale of two documents. Uh, the first document, which was filed by the prosecutors in Manhattan, they describe a pattern of deception by Michael Cohen. We'll read you just a part of what the, the court filing says. It says that Cohen, an attorney and businessman, committed four d distinct federal crimes over a period of several years. Uh, he was motivated to do so by personal greed and repeatedly used his power and influence for deceptive ends. Now he seeks extraordinary leniency, a sentence of no jail time, based principally on his rose-colored views of the, of the seriousness of his crimes. His claims to a sympathetic personal history and his provision of certain information to law enforcement. But the crimes committed by Cohen were more serious than his submission allows and were marked by a pattern of deception that permeated his professional life. Uh, Wolf, those are very, very strong word, words from the prosecutors in the Southern District of New York, the first place that Michael, Michael Cohen pleaded guilty to, uh, to uh, federal election crimes, essentially, as well as uh, financial crimes. Uh, one of the things the, the prosecutors note is that he underreported about $4 million in income. He's due. Uh, he, he owes the Treasury about $1.4 million, according to them. And they also say that despite the fact that Michael Cohen claims to have been uh, to have been very very cooperative with prosecutors they say uh, that cooperation is quote overstated in some respects and incomplete in others they cite a couple of different things wolf uh, they say that when the prosecutors in Manhattan tried to ask Cohen about other crimes things that he knew about he declined to provide that information and they also say that when when prosecutors from the attorney general of the state of New York asked for his help uh, he was only willing to give information that they already had now uh, as far as the second document that's been filed in the past uh, few minutes from the special counsel's office Robert Mueller's office they describe a more cooperative Michael Cohen they say that he has uh, essentially admitted to everything that he had did had done including lying to, to members of Congress obviously when he had first uh, testified uh, by in, in a written the written document Wolf it's interesting because in the document that the uh, the U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, New York says uh, the sentencing guidelines for the crimes uh, he committed, Michael Cohn, would range from 51 to 63 months. Uh, and then they say this, uh, for these reasons, the office respectfully requests that this court impose a substantial term of imprisonment, one that reflects a modest downward variance from the applicable guidelines range. In other words, they're recommending only a very, very modest reduction from the 51 to 63 months, maybe four years, five years in prison. Is that right? Right. That's right, Wolf. They're recommending essentially that he only get credit for being cooperative, for pleading guilty, obviously, to, to, to some of these crimes and have, avoiding having to go through a, a trial, but certainly for helping the special counsel's office. That seems to be where uh, all the credit that he's getting. Uh, because that uh, that piece of information has been very key to that investigation, but certainly, as you as you point out, uh, they're saying that he deserves to spend years behind bars because of this. And keep in mind, Wolf, uh, this is a deal that uh, that the prosecutors in Manhattan were very close to 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 not doing. They were ready to file charges against Michael Cohen. As a matter of fact, they were willing. Uh, they were. They even raised the prospect of uh, of charging his wife. They said that she had some exposure here. So, uh, the, the Michael Cohen, when he decided to plead guilty first in Manhattan, one of the reasons he did that was to spare his family. And frankly, they they, they believed that he was going to spend many many more years in, in prison if he did not uh, do this deal. Stand by, Evan. I want to bring Jeffrey Tubin in, uh, our, our chief legal. Uh, analyst, uh, Jeffrey, uh, in this document that Robert Mueller submitted to the court, uh, he makes it clear and he signs this document. You've been reading it. All of us have been reading it. That uh, Michael Cohen's lies to Congress were deliberate and premeditated. But Mueller, uh, Jeffrey, also says the information he has provided has been credible and consistent with other evidence obtained uh, in the special counsel office ongoing investigation. What are your major takeaways from these two documents? Well, I, I think, you know, 
most of what people care about out there in the real world is, well, how does this affect Donald Trump? I mean, well, you know, Michael Cohen will, will go to prison for some period of time. I think that's clear. But what does this mean for the, for the Russia investigation? And, and what, what has intrigued me here is in the Mueller filing in pages five and six, it does suggest that, uh, th that Cohn gave information about contacts with Russia that are beyond what we currently know. Let me just, if I can just call, call your attention to a, a sentence here. Uh, the defendant provided a detailed account of his involvement and the involvement of others in the Moscow project. That's the plan to build Trump, Trump Tower in Moscow. And also corrected the record concerning his outreach to the Russian government during the week of the United Nations General Assembly. The defendant also provided information about attempts by other Russian nationals to reach the campaign. Um, th this is further evidence of contacts between Russia and people affiliated with Russia and Cohen and other people affiliated with the, uh, with the Trump world, Trump business world, and the Trump campaign. That's why we care about all this. That's what's important. You know, whether Michael Cohen goes to jail for four years or three years is very important to him, but I don't think is very important to the, the, the larger world. What is significant, I think, is that Cohen told Mueller, Mueller's office, significant information about contacts between Russia and, and Trump's world. It's not very specific, as it's outlined here, but this does appear to be new information, additional contacts between Russia and, um, and, and Trump's orbit, and that could turn out to be significant. Yeah, that's uh, potentially very significant. Uh, Preet Bharara is with us, the former U.S. attorney for the Southern District of New York, a CNN analyst. Uh, Preet, uh, what, what, what stands out to you? What do you think? I agree with what uh, Jeffrey Tubin just said, uh, that what matters ultimately to a lot more people is how this affects Donald Trump, and I agree with the answer to that question, and that is there's clearly information that was provided to the special counsel's office that's significant and has caused the special counsel's office to have a somewhat a softer and kinder view of Michael Cohen because they believe they've gotten useful information, maybe not be the, the smoking gun that some people suspected, but useful information in such a way that the story is not over. Um, it's interesting and odd, as we've been talking about for the last few minutes, that you've got two different prosecutor's office, my old office and the special counsel's office, both putting in sentencing memoranda about a person and having a slightly different view of that person's uh, truthfulness and how forthcoming he was. But the thing to bear in mind is, for Michael Cohen, they're two separate cases. They were not consolidated. They're before the same judge, William H. Pauley, in the Southern District of New York. But they have separate docket numbers. They're separate crimes that have been alleged and to which he has pled guilty. The Southern District case involves eight counts that are very serious. And the, the guidelines that come with it are in excess of 51 months in prison. On the other hand, the special counsel's office case uh, is just one count of making a false statement to law enforcement authorities under 18 U.S.C. 1001 that we've been talking about for many months now. And the sentencing guidelines that attach to that are just zero to six months. So on the one hand, it seems like the Mueller team uh, was sort of happier with how Michael Cohen interacted with them. On the other hand, th the mitigation that Michael Cohen was trying to engage in with respect to his sentence is not as, n is not as needed because the seriousness of the crime to which he pled guilty on the Mueller side is just not as significant. He wasn't going to get much jail time, if any, even without cooperation on the, on the Mueller side. So, Preet, so when uh, Mueller says in his concluding line uh, that Michael Cohn's sentence, uh, any sentence imposed in this case uh, should be concurrently served with any sentence imposed in the United States versus Cohn, uh, that's not all that significant because what you're saying is the, uh, the second count of lying only had a sentence of, what, zero to six months? Yeah, typically, yes. And I think in his case, that would be correct. So, you know, if, if the judge decided to be tough on Michael Cohen with respect to the special counsel case, the lying count, and decided to give him six months, it, again, it would be in the judge's discretion whether or not to make that concurrent to whatever number of years, and it sounds like it'll be years, that he would impose on Michael Cohen in the other case, but it probably is no, of no consequence.